Get him dirty. Yo, dude, this is Blake from Green Uncles Across. On this week's FOGO Friday, we're reviewing East Coast Dye's Hero 2.0 Mesh. So generally when I review Mesh, it's kind of a short video that explains the reason why I had that super long intro. There's just not a lot of cover when reviewing Mesh, so I had to make up for the shorter review by making that super long intro. But I thought it was pretty cool and I hope you guys like it. So the three questions I usually ask myself when it comes to reviewing Mesh is one, how thin is it? Two, how durable is it? And three, how consistent is it? A thinner piece of mesh is more ideal for a face-off guy. One, because the ball has a lesser chance of getting stuck in the back of our stick because there's less mesh holding the ball in the back of it. The second part being the bubble effect. We all know that problem with thicker mesh that after a face-off and the mesh is still pushed forward in our head, when we go to catch the ball after popping it to ourselves, the mesh tends to stay like that. That causes a big problem once we win the face-off we're unable to actually secure the ball in our stick. It's almost like playing with a tennis racket at that point, and it's extremely frustrating when we get our sticks checked and the ball comes right out. So it's really important to have a super thin piece of mesh that eliminates the bubble effect. And a quick little test to show that this mesh doesn't really have that bubble is if I drop the ball from this height, and that's from this height too, that's pretty low. It's perfect. No cradle, nothing. So as you can see, there's no bubble effect with the Hero 2.0 mesh, which is great. To me, that's one less thing to worry about after the face-off. The face-off itself is already pretty stressful. So it's nice to know that there's a piece of mesh out there that will eliminate one of the things that drives a lot of face-off guys completely nuts, including myself. And the third part of thin mesh is the weight. Usually with a thinner piece of mesh, it's gonna be a lot lighter. So does Hero 2.0 help prevent the ball from getting stuck in the back of the head? Yes. Does it have a bubble effect? No. And is it lightweight? 
Yes. Next is durability. Um, I believe this really does represent the company themselves. A durable piece of mesh shows a lot of time being put into the development and design of the mesh. And they aren't looking to take your money. What I mean by that is a lot of companies make their mesh to where it's good for about the first month and then it just craps out over time. And once it reaches that crapping out part, then you have to go out and buy a new piece of mesh, which means more revenue for the company. So with a durable piece of mesh, they're not looking to have you go out and buy a new piece every month. They want you to have a piece that you can rely on and can last you a full season without any issues. So that's a great feature to have as far as a player company relationship. And the last thing about durability is a lot of face off guys, you know, we tear up our heads and our mesh gets all torn up too. And the way I string mine, so where the mesh is to the outside of the head, um, that's more prone to the mesh ripping. And I've used Hero 2.0 before. This one was directly out of the box. But when I used other heads that had Hero 2.0 in it, um, I noticed that it held up a lot longer than a lot of other mesh out there. So is the mesh thin? Yes. And is it durable? Yes. And the last part of the review is how consistent is the mesh? Like I said, I had this mesh in my other heads that I used before. And during that time, I had zero problems related to consistency. With that being said, I was able to pull the ball out pretty clean and I was able to make a perfect and clean pass to my hitman. And that's another thing too that a lot of faceoff guys need to be able to do is hit their hitman well and accurately to set him up for a shot. It's one of those things that a lot of good guys just overlook because it's expected to happen. But if you're playing with crappy mesh and you can't throw a consistent pass, it's extremely embarrassing to have that ball go flying right out of bounds. And then you come off the field and everyone's giving you crap for being a FOGO. So it's super important to have a very consistent piece of mesh in your head, especially with CEOs. Um, the whole face flex ordeal doesn't really help with accurate passes, but to have any sort of assistance with the mesh is huge. So is the mesh thin? Yes. Is it durable? Yes. And is it consistent? Yes. And a few more cool points about using Hero 2.0. Um, the mesh is made in the United States, which is a great thing to have. And the second part is the color availability. A lot of mesh companies can't do the striker design that East Coast Eyes does. If you like having a white piece of mesh with a few colors in it, it actually does look super clean and um, I think it's the best looking mesh out there. So if I was to rate this mesh on a scale of five stars, I would easily, without a doubt, give it a five out of five. The company's great and the products are great. A lot of companies have one or another, so it's really great to know that a top mesh company has both those points. As of right now, this is my favorite piece of mesh to use, so if you haven't already, be sure to go out and get yourself a piece and try it out, see if you like it for yourself. And that wraps it up for this week's FOGO Friday. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions on the Hero 2.0 mesh or any questions in general, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and share this video, subscribe to our channel, and check us out on Instagram at Green Knuckles Lacrosse. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in 2018. Till then, kids, get them dirty.